My name is Dr. Nkiru Ezani. I'm a board certified nurse practitioner with American Association of Nurse Practitioners. This presentation is coming to you courtesy of Una Life Care Team of Obodoku Union, North America. Today's presentation is about hypertension and what you should know. I know hypertension, high blood pressure, is a common disease. Unfortunately, people do not take it seriously as it should be. I'm going to begin today's presentation with the outline. We're going to discuss what is hypertension, different types of hypertension, classification of hypertension, risk factors, causes of hypertension, signs and symptoms, complications, treatment and management, prevention, frequently asked questions, and additional resources that I'm going to leave for you. What is hypertension? In another word, it's called high blood pressure. And it affects over 50 million people in the world. It's a medical condition that narrows the arteries. It increases the resistance of blood flow, which causes and increases the pressure of blood against the walls of arteries. It's a common disorder, like I said, which the blood pressure remains abnormally high. And if left untreated, it may lead to other conditions such as heart attack, stroke, kidney failure, loss of vision, and a, a, a host of other disorders. We have two types of hypertension. The first one is primary hypertension called essential hypertension. People tend to feel the same. They feel normal, like people with normal blood pressure. And the cause of this type is commonly unknown. This is where you said it was incidentally or accidentally found during you know, a doctor's visit or may checking your blood pressure with you know, a, a machine. And the cause is not related to another medical condition is the most common form of hypertension. The second one is a secondary hypertension. This is as a result of another medical problem or use of certain medications. When people have kidney failure, liver failure, diabetes, it brings on uh, high blood pressure. Classification of hypertension. Is classified under four. The first one is normal blood pressure. This is where the systolic, let me explain this. Systolic is the blood pressure number on top and the diastolic is the blood pressure reading at the bottom. And systolic, the one on top, is when the blood is pushing against the walls of the heart to circulate blood all over your body. Diastolic is when the heart has taken a rest before it picks up another wall. So the normal blood pressure is 120, 120 over 80 or less than that. Prehypertension is when the systolic is 120 to 139 or diastolic, the lower one, 80 to 89. Stage one hypertension is when the upper one, systolic, is 140 to 159, or the diastolic, the lower one, is 90 to 99. Stage two hypertension is when the upper one, systolic, is greater than 160 or diastolic greater than 
100. In this scenario, pre-hypertension is when somebody knows that, oh, my blood pressure is going up, trying to make amends. That's when the doctor tells you, fix this, what is going on. Stage one is when medication is introduced to control this pressure, to get it down. Stage two is actually untreated. And this is where it gets bad because this is where it starts to damage, so affect some of the organs of the body. We talk about the risk factors that causes high blood pressure. Age or advanced age, lifestyle, when people drink too much alcohol, smoking, inactivity, gender. Previous research has it that men has more hypertension than women. But recently, according to American Heart Association, women has taken over that. Women has now more hypertension and heart disease than men. Number four, diabetes mellitus, the one we called sugar disease. When we have that, it creates pressure in the, in the arteries. Ethnicity, family history. There are families that from their parents, grandparents, that generation, they have high blood pressure. That does not mean that you cannot do something about it. It's just that it's, it's in the family. Stress, when people go through a lot of stress, emotional, physical, whatever it is. Weight gain and high cholesterol and triglycerides. Causes. Sometimes the causes and risk factors kind of line themselves next to each other. Genetic. Some people are prone to hypertension simply based on their genetic makeup. Like I said before, risk factors. What is in the line of family? So once there is that in that family, you have to work harder to make sure that you keep your blood pressure low. Environment. And these factors are what I grouped under environment, which is inactivity, stress factors, obesity, which is weight gain, alcohol, high sodium diet, tobacco use, age, menopausal medications. High sodium, when people cook and do not measure how much um, salt they put in, in between the salt and other condiments that they put in. And sometimes there are people that are used to putting table salt after they have finished cooking. The menopause. When women get to menopause, they start losing some of the hormones that control their body. And then it creates uh, stress, it creates thickening of the artery. And these are causes of high blood pressure. Signs and symptoms. High blood pressure is diagnosed through repeated blood pressure readings. Usually when you go to the, your provider the first time and your blood pressure is high, they usually want to make another appointment to review that blood pressure, measure it in another sitting. So when you come back the next time, possibly the first one was, you know, there was stress, you were in a hurry, you know, so many different reasons that people give. But when the second reading is consistently high, and that's when you are diagnosed with hypertension. Primary hypertension does not have symptoms. You don't feel anything. And just people move around with blood pressure 160, 170, over 90, 90 something. And then there is the secondary hypertension, most likely caused by 
kidney disease, uh, liver disease, and people start to see uh, symptoms. You start seeing decreased urine formation. People don't go to the bathroom as much as they used to go. Increased sodium and water retention. Because when you have hypertension, you start to retain salt in your body. And that pulls fluid into your body so you don't release it as supposed to. And this elevates your blood pressure. People complain of dizziness, blood or double vision, nausea, headaches, drowsiness, nosebleeds, a flushed appearance, sharpness of breath. So uh, some, when people have symptoms, they uh, have been having this headache for two days, three days, and then they keep taking analgesic, Tylenol, and if you go and check your blood pressure, that's the best time to check, and your blood pressure is high. That's the time you need to see your doctor so you can start on treatment. Complications that can come as a result of hypertension. Thickening of the heart muscle. After a period of elevated blood pressure, your heart muscle with the cholesterol that have accumulated will start to thicken the heart muscle and start to close up. Then the heart will start working over time. It will be working too much to push this blood to be able to circulate around your body. Increased workload of the heart. Why? Because the heart had to work more so that it can give you oxygen in the body. So it can push more. It can give blood to your major organ. The brain, the eye, those ones that are, you know, sometimes they pull up from the lower extremities. Heart attack. Extremely uncontrolled blood pressure leads to heart attack. That's when you hear somebody just fell down. I was talking to him or her and he collapsed. Or people go to bed and they don't wake up the next morning because they had a, heart, a massive heart attack or stroke. Kidney disease. It kills the, disease. It kills the kidney. It shuts kidney down. And that's what leads people to dialysis. Instead of the kidney being able to flush out what the body doesn't need, now it needs a machine to do the job for the person. Blindness, yes. When blood couldn't push enough to give you oxygen and the nutrients that you need, it starts to kill your vision. So that's why we have to pay attention. We have to be very careful with hypertension. Treatment and management. Step one, lifestyle modification. This is where we do diet and exercise. We limit alcohol intake and tobacco use. Reduce stress factors. Step two, if lifestyle changes are not enough, you come back to the doctor and the blood pressure remains the same or it has increased more. This is where drug therapy is introduced. Usually, most providers will start with water pill, something like uh, hydrochlorothiazide. And then when you come back for a follow-up, if these steps, both step one and step two, has not worked according to what is desired, and then treatment will change. It's either the dosage is increased or another medication is introduced. Step four, yet if the blood pressure is still not controlled at this level, 
This is the period where you start looking for a specialist, a cardiologist, heart doctor. And there will be more tests to be done, like echocardiogram, where they will look into the heart and see the arteries and see if there's any blockage to find out what the problem is. Because the blood pressure has to be under control. Prevention. Prevention. According to the U.S. Health and Human Services, combination of increased physical activity, moderation in alcohol intake, and better eating habits represent the best approach for preventing high blood pressure in high-risk populations. You have to change your lifestyle. You have regular checkups with your primary physician. This is very important. You have to have checkups. Education. Being aware of your blood pressure and where it should be. Understanding your personal risk factors. What is in your family? What do I have to watch for? Engage in community health awareness activities. Anywhere you see that there is community health fair, it's free. You go there and you check your blood pressure. Usually they will check your cholesterol. They will check your glucose level. This is random. This is how you find out from day to day what is going on in your body. And when you find out that my blood pressure is high, you take the number to your primary care doctor so that it can be followed, you can be followed up. Living with high blood pressure, this is when you have, you've been diagnosed. Now you have high blood pressure. We continue to preach and talk about lifestyle changes, which is diet and exercise is very important. Because with diet and exercise, you can maintain your weight. You take the prescribed medication as um, dictated by your doctor. You do not skip doses. Recognize this as an ongoing process, which requires regular checkups. Taking medication and checking blood pressure regularly. If you pass through your pharmacy, if you pass through anywhere that checking blood pressure, or if you have your own machine, make it a point of duty to check your blood pressure daily because it, it creates damage to kidney and other organs in mother and fetus. This is when complication with pregnancy. Sometimes when a woman is pregnant and it has uncontrolled high blood pressure, it leads into low birth weight. And also preeclampsia. Preeclampsia is a cluster of uh, conditions that comes about when a woman is pregnant with high blood pressure, uncontrolled. And it leads to bed rest. And the woman is sick throughout the period of the pregnancy and usually end up with a, a difficult delivery. So with high blood pressure, why I'm discussing high blood pressure today is because we really have to be very careful. Everybody, now, even children at the age of 13, 14, is diagnosed at this time. People feed on fast food. People don't do exercise. They sit in their couch and push on their gadgets. We need to be very active. We need to check our blood pressure. We need to have our annual physical. So we have frequently asked questions. People you know, want to find out what factors that can increase their risk for hypertension. Going back to it is heredity, age, weight, salt, extra salt intake, alcohol, medication, and sedentary lifestyle. What is DASH diet? DASH diet is a dietary approach to stop hypertension. DASH diet 
is when you are in you know, say eating plan designed to prevent and treat hypertension. It tells you how much salt you can have in your diet. And then whether potassium helps? Yes. When you're on diuretic, you have potassium as a supplement or they'll give you a potassium sparing diet or medication. Thank you for listening to this presentation. I have additional resources that will help you to know more about hypertension. Thank you.